Hello, my name's Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Now today I'm building this, the 172nd scale P39 Aero Cobra from Armour Hobby. Now if you are thinking about buying one of these and just want to know what's in the box then there's already a companion video available of the box opening already on my channel. If you've got one and you want to know how to put it together, this is very much the video for you. Now, if you like the video, and I hope you do, please remember, imperial thumbs up on the like button below. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell and you'll be notified of future videos as they crop up. And of course, if you want to offer a bit more concrete support for the channel, you can do it through any of my partner programs. Super thanks or become a member of the channel. Anyway, let's crack on now and have a look at how I made this Aero Cobra in 172nd scale from Armour Hobby. As normal, I've pre-painted a lot of the cockpit parts. And what I'm going to do is just dry brush over the instrument panel. Now you can, of course, use the decals that come with the kit. Um, they'll be fine. If you do, there's, there's one for the middle and one for each of the sides. I just find dry brushing gives a, a brighter contrast. Um, and you can use their decals to tell you if there's any colours. Like there's a, a spot of red that needs to go here somewhere and there's some yellow up here. You can use that as a pattern. Um, the other reason is on the other uh, instrument piece... I've got to do it soon, which is here. Um, these controls, um, there's a lot of relief there. They, they stand out a lot. And I find it very difficult to get uh, some of these decals to stick uh, and, and follow the relief. Some, you know, it's not difficult to get them to actually follow the relief as such. Um, but, you know, they're printed with these, these spacings of the dials. Now, if they've then got to fit into these quite deep bits between, it kind of pulls these side ones in so they don't sit where they should. Um, so I, I prefer to, to dry brush them and then uh, pick out any colour. And also, it makes it nice and bright. I, I really do find the contrast is much, much better if I do it myself. Right, we're going to start the assembly of the cockpit with putting the rudder bars into the base of the rudder box here and this then supports the instrument panel above. So next, this frame piece here goes in around the back of the seat. And see how it has to fit into that notch there, like so. Then the seat itself can sit on these two little pegs down here at the bottom and then sit backwards against the bulkhead. Well, I guess it's probably armour plate as well. There okay, we so we can start now assembling this cockpit. The rear wall goes on here. Like so. It sits into that. Like that. Then put a dab of just a tiny dab of glue there. there we and we are going to put the the control column in. The control column is very, very, very small. But it's probably actually better in scale than most manufacturers 
make. There we go. Then we have this. Then we have this instrument panel. You can see these two little holes there. That's the locators for the this instrument panel here. Sits an angle like that across the drive shaft for the propeller. Sits there. The main instrument panel goes in here somewhere. So there we go, that's what it looks like. So seat is in, um, it lines up in this sort of slot here. The front instrument panel and support and all that. Um, there's a little notch there and it also sits up against the front end of the pr uh, prop shaft tunnel there. Uh, that goes in on the two little um, locator holes there and of course the control column goes in on the little control column stub there so that's it that's all done there these panels for the which are the sides of the nose wheel bay go in you can see they meet up around the prop shaft here And this piece goes in, has to slot in the hole there, which will push everything apart, which is not what I want. This is a... It's quite a trying kit, I have to say, so far. I think that has to go down there. Does it not? And then the whole lot starts collapsing around you, so... And now we can put in the weights, nose weights. These come supplied with the kit and they fall into this custom made holding area. What a great idea that is. And then when you're ready, you can put the, this is actually the engine cover, but also it holds the radio in place like so then the cockpit tub goes in the front like so then the two halves of the cockpit can go together now if you start at the back and get that sorted out first it makes the rest of it a lot easier to go together just um, make sure you can tweak bits as you go along. While the fuselage is setting up, I'll just put this in. This is the front, uh, uh, sorry, the rear bulkhead for the nose gear door put that in and then we can put the two halves of the wing together. I have already drilled out the holes here and here that are needed to put the gun pods on later. Then we can put the top wing skins on in place like so. Then whilst that's drying we can puts the wing and fuselage together. It is actually an exceptionally good fit, as you can see. Right, so this is the tailplane and put the elevator and it hooks underneath. And then there are these hinge tabs that sort of locate it. And it's all very thin and all very fine and all very to scale, actually. It's really, Really nice, um, yeah, looks good. And it sits on the tail like that. And the fin sits in place here.
and then the rudder slots into the back of the fin like so. There we go. Then finally, for the moment at least, as this cover goes over the front of the engine transfer box, this is where the gun port is. And that's pretty much the fuselage finished. We'll let all that set. We'll then do a little tiny bit of filling here and there. And we'll be ready to continue. And the gun pods and go on under the wings like so. The P39 had these car doors on each side. They come with a mask for the interior, which is lovely because you're going to have to spray the interior and paint it. Um, they also come with these tiny, and I do mean tiny, decals. Whether you put them all on is up to you. Um, I'm going to just because they're there and I should, I suppose. But you can take a take a position on whether or not you're going to bother with these, especially if you're having all the doors closed. I'm going to put some PVA, some, this is micro crystal clear, you can use, actually you could use just regular PVA, I guess. Or you can use, um, let's Revel make one, I'm, sh I'm sure. Ethics probably doing it, Humbrol probably do as well. But it's a PVA, so you're not going to get any um, hazing because this is going to be a closed cockpit, so there's not really going to be any room for um, gases to get out. And some of these things do produce a lot of sort of volatiles. So there's the uh, one door. Now I've taken off the um, paint mask on the inside, but I've kept the outside one on, obviously, and that just sort of sits into place. So, then the one piece top canopy can just slot on top like so. The first colour we're going to put down is the blue on the underside. And for this I'm using flanker light blue as the closest to the blue that was actually used I can find. And top surface gets a coat of coral sand or this is actually sand, ivory sand. Yeah, ivory sand. But anyway, this is as close as I can get. So, these decals are really delicate, uh, a, a lot more so than so the cartograph ones you get with Airfix or people like that. So, plenty of decal set, or in this case, micro set. And get your decal roughly lined up and then just sort of feed it onto the aircraft like this. Now, this one sits right quite a long way along the wing. There we go. That sits just there. Now, I would let that set for a good hour because we're going to want these to sit down and th these. Um, panel lines are not very big. They're, they're beautiful, they're very sharply um, made on the kit, but they're not very wide, so if you want them to sit into that, it's going to take some work with the uh, microsole, the solution that helps them sit in. But these need to dry on in place first, so leave them to dry. This piece of the nose undercarriage um, it's like a bracing strut, um, but it also has an, a brace of itself, so you have to bend the piece yourself. Uh, 
how much you bend it is governed by the size of the little strut that comes with it which is this one here so you can see it kind of sits between the two I think it probably needs just a little bit more bending it so if we put the strut in you can see it's just a bit short at the moment you can see it fits up here on this assembly here but it also just touches into the cross piece there which will hold it in place each side of the main gear has the wheel the wheel's got um, a weighted flat spot down here and there's a leg that goes in and the leg actually has a little a really small tab but a, a tab but nonetheless to keep it in the right position relative to the flat spot then the wheel and leg can sit on the door like so the wheel sits into a channel on the door like this and you can see there's a small part of the leg that rests on a little platform here so the nose wheel gear and there's this front Oh, sorry, this rear support leg that goes in. This is really fiddly and really, really delicate. Um, it's supposed to click in. It's about click. It's supposed to engage with a plate that's there in the aircraft. And you know what? I can't get it to do that. So I'm going to get it to roughly sit where it should and then hope for the best. You know, there are times when you, you like aircraft kits and there's times when you really think, oh, do you know what, why did you do it this way? This is one of those latter times. Why? Oh, why? Did you do it this way? I'm supposed to be able to just slot this in and this is supposed to then engage with that plate and it doesn't it just doesn't okay it's somewhere like that it's something like that and that's as much as i'm going to do for the moment um because otherwise i'm going to break it and then i'll be very unhappy the front part of the nose wheel sort of slots in and it hooks over the drive shaft and then pushes forward and engages somewhere, I don't know where. And then this part of the gear is supposed to fold down and sort of go into the back of it there. Um, I, look, that's as close as I'm going to get. All right, I, I really don't want to mess around anymore with this because I will start breaking stuff, so that's as close as I can get. And the main gear slots into a yeah, nicely placed hole there. Goes in quite firmly, which is really good. While I'm here, I might as well put the propeller onto the front. Then I'll put the spinner on top of that. And finally the 37mm gun barrel in the front. And the exhaust pipes can go in. The uh, gun barrels for the underwing pods here 
Um, there's no actual hole for them to sit in. It's more like just like a recess that the bottom of them sits in. I guess it probably would be better if you can just drill a tiny hole in to help it um, stay upright. Um, or put the model upright like this so it stays in place. The piso on the wing has got a hole in the wing for it. And once we take the masks off the canopy, that's pretty much the whole thing done. A little bit of weathering here and there, and the job's finished. Um, it's a, a nice kit to build. There's a few issues, uh, particularly with the undercarriage nose wheel, that you know are a bit of a detraction, but they needed a bit of extra work. But generally speaking, the fit is fairly good. The, the moulding is superb. It is very, very crisp, and it all goes together eventually. Uh, makes a nice kit of a very, very interesting aircraft. There we go. Lovely little kit, not without its challenges, but hey, challenges make us better modelers at the end of the day, don't they? I enjoyed making it. I'm sure you will too. Now, if you've enjoyed the video, please remember to let me know by giving it the Imperial thumbs up on the like button below. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel hit that bell and you'll be notified of future videos as they arrive on the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.